<laughs> hey everybody, it's Stephanie Shea, Chief Astrologer for JanSpiller.com with Facebook Live event on the North Nodes ingress into Gemini. Welcome everybody. I am particularly excited about today's topic because most of you know that Jan Spiller's work had a lot to do with the North Node. Uh, most people have probably read or at least heard of her book, Astrology for the Soul, which talks all about the importance of the North Node in a person's birth chart and how that can be a guiding energy of how to find success in this lifetime. Whatever sign the North Node is expressed in, in a personal birth chart, generally are traits to embody that are going to really be helpful. Um, and people are always working to release traits that are more of the shadow traits because every sign has their positive expression and their shadow expression. And um, it, when in a South node placement, often there's these shadow traits of the opposite sign that need to be released. Now that's in a personal chart and that's all in Jan's awesome book, Astrology for the Soul. What I'm going to focus on more today has to do with the North node in the sky and how that can operate as sort of a global compass. Um, what happens when the North Node changes signs the way it is today? It just moved into the sign of Gemini. That's a big energetic shift because the North Node only changes signs about every year and a half. And so we're coming into a time where there's new energies available that are helpful to us. And before I get too much into this, um, Hold on one moment. <laughs> My diagram, I think, got buried when I was setting up some equipment. Um, hold on, it's right behind me. Um, I wanted to give a brief explanation of what the nodes are because people often have questions about that. And I'm a very visual person, maybe you are as well. So I thought I would just show quickly what they are, they're actually points in the sky. They're not any kind of planetary body. They're mathematical points. So when you see the Earth, you know, we've got the Earth orbiting around the sun. And then we have the moon's orbit around the Earth. Well, where these two orbits intersect are the nodes of the moon. And so when the moon is ascending in its orbit, the northernmost point is known as the North Node. And as it's descending in its orbit, the southernmost point is called the South Node. And they're always in opposite zodiac signs. And because of these orbits, from our perspective, it looks as if the nodes are moving backwards through the zodiac. And all of astrology is from an Earth-centric point of view. You know, we talk about retrograde planets. They're not actually moving backwards, but from our perception, they are. And we interpret it that way for ourselves because this is how we are experiencing the astrology. So that's a brief explanation of what the nodes are and why they seem to be going backwards through the zodiac for us. So that's my <laughs> arts and crafts diagram for you. Um, and it's really important to note that we're coming out of a year and a half of the North Node in Cancer. Uh, the North Node was in Cancer between November 7th of 2018, um, all the way up until yesterday. Today was the shift. And so knowing that the nodes move backwards, we know that the North Node is actually at the very end of Gemini today. It's at the 29 degree point. It's going to take a year and a half to get all the way back to zero before it shifts into Taurus, which will be January 18th, 2022. So we're in for a stretch of time. And I think it's interesting to note that the last time the North Node was in the sign of Gemini was October of 2001 through April of 2003. And when we think about 2001, most people can't help but think about 9-11 that happened in September. So big earth-shaking event, 
that took a lot of people by surprise, made them feel less safe, which is a cancer kind of theme when we think of Cancer North Node, which was when the 9-11 actually happened. Then entering into Gemini North Node for the next year and a half was a time of a lot of questions, a lot of curiosity, research, people thinking, how could this happen? What even happened? What, it, you know, and I see that exact energy of this Gemini investigation going on right now, trying to wrap our heads around this COVID virus. I think we're going to see with this North Node in Gemini the next year and a half that people are asking a lot of questions and trying to learn. Gemini rules learning. We're going to learn a lot. And my hope is that some of this questioning and learning will help to prevent something like this in the future on this large of a scale, because we certainly haven't seen a pandemic of this scale. Um, so that is one correlation, how the North Nodes can operate. They're generally operating in our highest good. When you think of a North Node energy, we're going to get, as I was saying, the highest expression of Gemini, that very intellectual, logical energy. I think this is really good to help support science as um, I was talking about in my other videos that have to do with Saturn in Aquarius and at the end of the year, Saturn and Jupiter. This is air sign energy, Gemini, Gemini is air sign. So I feel that we do have a lot of support for scientific investigation right now. Um, another thing is networking and connection. Technology is certainly a Gemini theme. And this has already started. I think half the, <laughs> the globe is on Zoom right now, or maybe something like this Facebook Live. That's gonna continue to ramp up, I think. And it's gonna help people stay connected. Now, one thing that's interesting with Gemini energy is that it is on a smaller scale. Um, it's communities, your neighbors. So I do feel that there's going to be more um, interaction within communities to help each other out during these times over this next year and a half of the North Node in Gemini. Um, there's a huge curiosity of exploring new ideas. And so neighbors may be sharing tips about how they're working with their resources. Um, they may be exchanging actual goods and services, but it, it, I think it'll be more on a localized level because Gemini really is short trips, um, neighbors, people in your immediate vicinity. It doesn't mean we won't stay connected globally, but what we can effectually do will probably feel more local. Now, um, let's make sure I covered. So 18.6 years is um, the total time it takes for the nodes to move all the way around the zodiac. Um, so it's it's been some time, you know, like I said, since um, the end of 2003 or the spring of 2003 when the North Node was last in Gemini, it's back. Um, and we're kind of leaving this Cancer North Node, Capricorn South Node era, where um, security borders, families, we saw these as big themes in 2019 and this part of 2020. That we don't leave all that behind, but I think there's going to be more of a shift to um, scientific exploration and intellectual problem solving, getting less out of heated emotional debates and thinking, okay, what's our plan here? Uh, we had to have the emotional part first, I believe. I think these nodal cycles feed into each other. So people had to first care and about what's going on um, on an emotional level. But now we get to bring in some logic and um, planning and things that we could do a little bit more concretely now, I want to mention quickly the south nodes because they are a big piece of it. Um, so with the north node being in Gemini now, we now have a south node in Sagittarius. 
Um, and Sagittarius is normally seen as very optimistic, um, really kind of that lucky sign associated with Jupiter. It's got amazing traits. I love Sagittarius. And as, like all the zodiac signs, <laughs> Sagittarius does have some shadow traits. When it's in a south node placement, this can tend to be what comes out because it's showing us what needs to be purged. So south node Sagittarius has to do with excess. When you think of expansion and when it's taken too far, we end up with excess or overindulgence or too much risk taking, being overly optimistic. These are the things over the next year and a half that we're gonna need to let go of. And I think we're seeing some hints of that now. Um, you know, I think there is some camps that have some over optimism about where we're at, for example, <laughs> with COVID and, oh, maybe it's almost over right now. Let's <laughs> get out there. And I'm not seeing that when I look at scientific reports, which is what the Gemini North Node would imply. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, and let's see, for personal charts, I want to quickly mention that if you have um, Gemini strongly in your chart, this is a time when you are really being highlighted. People may actually turn to you for some advice, for some examples, because you're used to using Gemini traits, whether you're a Gemini sun, maybe Gemini rising, Gemini moon, um, things that come naturally to you don't always come naturally to others. You know, Ge Gemini energy moves quickly. It's good at sorting through information, multitasking. Um, this is what's being highlighted in the next year and a half with North Node and Gemini. So I plan to check in with some of my Gemini <laughs> friends and see, okay, what are they up to? How are they approaching things? Um, if you have a North Node in Gemini, and this happens about four times in your life. It's at ages 18, ages 37, you know, it, within, there could be a, a year wiggle room, but around these ages, 55 and 74. This is a clarifying time for your life path. When the North Node in the sky lines up with where the North Node was in your birth chart, you can really have some aha moments about what you need to do to be on path. And so it can be a very exciting time coming up for you. Um, so maybe some of you out there are having these type of transits. I'm going to check over on my question area and see if people have questions about that. That's generally the overview of what's going to be going on with this North Node in Gemini. It both brings out the best traits of Gemini and kind of directs us to follow that path. Um, and I do think it's related to the previous nodal cycle we just had that sort of presented a problem for us to solve. And now the Gemini mind is going to get to work on some problem solving. So it, it feels like good timing for this to come up for us because we do definitely have some things to figure out. So I'm going to look over here. I see some wonderful friends that I'm waving hello to. Um, wow, let's see. North Node is in Gemini. I see someone ask, uh, Sandra, you're saying it's going to be in Gemini the next year and a half. Correct. So the official dates for the North Node in Gemini is going to be from today until January 18th, 2022. And at that point, it's going to move into Taurus and we'll have a whole new energy coming in uh, to work with. So and if your North Node is in Gemini, yes, you're you're due for a nodal return, depending on what degree. If you're late degree Gemini North Node, then it's probably happening right now. But if you are um, more towards the beginning of Gemini, it may not happen until early next year um, or 2022, I should say, <laughs> right? January 18th, 2022. So within that time span, Gemini North Node birth chart 
people will have their nodal return. Um, so I have another good question about how does Jan feel about when the North Node is directly opposite Saturn? And I'm assuming that that is in a birth chart. Um, and she got into the aspects a little bit, but more combined with people's charts. Um, if you've read Cosmic Love, that's another amazing North Node focused book by Jan Spiller, where she will talk about where do the North Nodes fall in your partner's chart or in someone significant in your life. It doesn't have to be romantic. Um, and so I think she would say, you know, with two people, when the North Node is opposite Saturn, there's that means Saturn is on the person's South Node, right? And so in your birth chart, it sounds like, um, see, I'm trying to figure out, maybe you will write in more, Barbara, whether you mean the North Node in the sky is opposite your Saturn, or if you mean you were born with the North Node opposite Saturn. It's, it's two slightly different things, but in general, if Saturn is on your South Node, then you are definitely getting rid of some old karma. And I think when that lines up, that it's a big push. You may feel like, whew, I'm getting rid of a lot right now and I'm learning like how to move towards energies that are gonna work a lot better for me. But if you wanna uh, message me, Barbara, later, we can specify <laughs> if, if that's what you meant. Um, so we have someone here with a Gemini rising. So I'll mention, this is really good. Um, if the North Node is on your ascendant, your rising part of your chart, that can really help others to help get you on your path because the rising sign is how we interact with the world. And generally what happens there kind of magnetizes the people and situations towards us that we need. Um, and you may find that you're being seen in a different way um, and that, that your image can be adjusted, I guess is the best way to say, to, to be more in alignment with your authentic self. So if you felt misunderstood, I think when the North Node hits your ascendant, you'll feel, um, wow, people get me now, I'm able to express and be better understood. That's one way <laughs> to look at it. Um, so let's see. Wow, there's so many questions. I'm going to try to get to as many as I can. We have, you know, a few few more minutes together for sure. Um, yeah, someone here is dating a Gemini. And I would say, like I was saying for all Geminis, this is a positive effect. When the North Node is in your sun sign, you're going to feel more sense of purpose. You're going to feel more drawn towards the activities that will support you on your path probably have less distractions, maybe more focused. Gemini is known to be kind of a scattered energy, but when it's in its highest expression, I think Geminis know how to multitask with focus. Like they boom, 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 done, done, done. And they can keep track of all the plates they have spinning in the air. So just because they're multitasking, I don't think that means lack of focus, but, um, but I do think, yes, any Gemini is going to probably feel supported on their path this year. Um, so let's see, North Node in third house. Oh, this is a great question. I love these questions. Um, North Node in third house, does that count as Gemini as well? And in the preface of Astrology for the Soul, Jan does mention, check out the house that has similar themes to the zodiac sign of your node. So in this example, Gemini rules a lot of third house themes, communication, learning, neighbors, siblings, you know, connectedness, writing, all that stuff. Um, so even this person's Darm's North Node may be in a whole other sign, there is gonna be a Gemini kind of flavor to what they're doing and Jan actually recommended reading both chapters. She said, you know, read your Gemini North or whatever sign your North node is. And then if it's in the third house, 
go ahead and read that chapter too, and both may apply. So that was a wonderful question. Um, I see Terry Taylor Gonzalez on here. And Terry, I'm gonna have an exciting um, broadcast for you because you mentioned June 5th as your birthday. And that is the day that we're having a lunar eclipse. And so that, that indicates a, a big year coming up for you. But I won't go into that in this uh, broadcast, but nice to see you. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna scan through. Sun, North Node, and Ascendant all in Gemini. Sharon Zimmerman, yes, and <laughs> Sharon is a fellow astrologer and somebody that that I think of when I think of Gemini person. She comes to mind right away and definitely be getting her take on things this year. Um, so I am going to have to close out seeing there's so many amazing questions. Um, what's great is that we are going to be able to post a recorded version of this on YouTube within a few days. So if you came in late or you know people who missed it, I'm going to be able to, you know, have that up there on the Jan Spiller Astrology YouTube channel. And uh, it'll, it'll be up there as a resource for everybody. And yeah, I think, you know, with everything going on right now, this Gemini energy is something that can really help us because people are looking for something to do right now. And I think um, getting educated, learning new things, we're all in a big learning curve in our situation here together. So knowing that now we're getting an extra boost and support for these types of activities uh, from the North Node in Gemini, we can have something to lean into. And when we feel hung up, we could think about not just our personal South Node energy, but what's the overarching South Node stuff that might be hanging us up with that Sagittarius South Node now being present. And, and I do think it, it could be some of that excess and extra optimism, like just thinking, oh, we need more of everything and we need it now. You know, it's like, well, maybe we need to simplify, examine the information, take things in very small detailed steps, which is more of the Gemini <laughs> style. Um, so thank you. I'm really appreciative of everybody who showed up today. It's really wonderful to see people um, writing in about what's going on in their chart I think we got a lot of Gemini uh, strong people on this <laughs> this broadcast today um, because of their curiosity to learn more about this. And um, I will also just quickly mention that I was on a podcast recently on wisdomradio.org. And I invite you to check that out um, where I speak a little bit more about Jan Spiller's legacy and some of the things going on in astrology. Um, you can use your inquisitive <laughs> Gemini energy to go investigate that podcast. And thank you so much for joining me today. I'll try to check out the rest of these questions and get back to people, or you can also message me. Thank you so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day.